Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. And I'd like to say welcome to uh, my guest today, uh, Carissa, who uh, is a blogger and a mother based in, in, the, in the United States. Hi, Carissa. Hi. Welcome to the show, and thanks so much for um, talking to me today. Yeah, thank you, too. Thanks. So um, you got back in touch with me because I, I mentioned on Facebook that I was interested in talking to people <laughs> who had experience in in breaking uh in, or finding freedom from religion i guess is the way to put it yeah um, and so i guess you know my sort of just just to start things off i wonder if you could tell me a little bit about what, what were your experiences with uh, religion um uh, when you were growing up um well i was born into a religious family um specifically christianity mm-hmm. and uh, i was basically grew up in a Baptist church um, in Philadelphia in the um, United States. And um, it was a majority, you know, African-American congregation. And um, pretty much all my life, I went to church, you know, went to Sunday school, you know, every week. And my mother wasn't, like, super duper strict, um, like how she was raised, where, you know, they could only wear, you know, skirts like a certain length and all that stuff. But, um, no, I basically grew up with the general outlook that, you know, Christianity was the right religion for everybody. Mm. And that if you didn't believe in Jesus Christ, um, you know, you're basically go to hell essentially. Right. And I mean that, that just to, you know, as I was saying, I, I'm, I don't, I, I didn't really grow up with religion, but that, that mm-hmm. the hell thing, you know, it strikes me, especially for children, that, that, mm-hmm. that um, I mean, that must be psychologically pretty, uh, a pretty big thing. Um, you know, sort of what, what do you feel the impact of religion was on you? I mean, you know, what, how, how do you think it sort of affected you being brought up um, within a religious context? I think it it kind of made me scared, actually, to, like, do things or to, like, make decisions. So you had to constantly, you know, question what you were doing based off of what you perceived as being, uh, I guess, the word of God. So you had to, like, compare it to what was apparently being said in this book. Mm. So it... It just made you question yourself a lot. And it made you think that, or made me think that if I didn't make, you know, the quote unquote right choice, that I was going to be punished somehow, you know, in the future. And it's, you know, it's interesting because I remember a lot of the people that I went to Sunday school with and a lot of the adults. And when I look back on it now, a lot of them weren't perfect. I mean, they were is that they were the same as the people that I'd meet anywhere else, mm-hmm. like at school or when I got older, at, you know, on, on my job or, you know, in college. It was like I, I couldn't meet a jerk in church or I could meet a jerk at my job. It, it was just like no different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, is this something that, you know, I guess from when you're inside a sort of um, religious environment, I am mm-hmm. it's it's sort of very like you, you say that later you could see that well these are just people who uh, these are like normal people in in the church human mm-hmm. beings like any other human beings they could be jerks or not you know um, mm-hmm. but but do you feel like when did you when did you feel that you sort of became aware of that um that you know that Christianity or the church wasn't in some sense like special that these are human beings saying mm-hmm. these rules and so forth um probably Around the time that I got married, um, my husband and I, um, we were still living in the Philadelphia area, and he was going to school. And up until that point, you know, I was still going to the church I grew up in, mm. but I was, you know, out of school and working. And we tried to find a church that was closer to where we lived because we were living outside of the city at that point. So we would just go to different churches together, and it, it was just like some kind of weird disconnect. And some of it may have had to do with the fact that we were interracial couple and churches are very segregated even now. Um, I'm speaking for the United States because it's the only experience I have. And they're primarily either African-American churches or primarily like a white church. So I think 
people still have weirdness about that. They don't really know how to, to like relate to you. Right. So um, that might have been part of it. And the other part was just, I don't know, it's like you go there and they're nice to you and they're smiling, but they're, they're probably kind of wondering about you. Well, are you really saved? Or... So it's just like this weird judgment mm. that I think we were both feeling, but we weren't really connecting it to maybe the entire you know paradigm should be questioned but at the time we were just kind of like thinking well maybe they're just weirdos at <laughs> this yeah. church whatever so that was kind of the beginning for I think both of us like questioning things and, and when my husband was in school he took a religion class um, ironically at a Christian school and that kind of started making him question just the veracity or the truthfulness of the bible right so that really started the ball rolling think for both of us well i think it's awesome that you i mean man that you two sort of went through that process together because mm -hmm. i should imagine that it's very difficult for some couples if if one person you know is uh questioning that um yeah. you know that that could obviously really um cause problems in a relationship and i think it's yeah a fantastic thing that you two were able to in a sense have that um sort of journey together by the sound of it yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's just, we're lucky in that, and that we're, we're both, you know, pretty, I think, you know, smart people, and, um, you know, I read a lot, and everything I read out, you know, I always talk to my husband about, and, you know, we, we connect intellectually pretty well, um, so I think it was probably after I had my son, um, or our son, is that I started really hard like questioning things you know just basically because I you know I remember I have like fond memories of going to Sunday school and I think it wasn't necessarily what I was learning it was just the interaction with the other kids I mean it was fun I was a kid and so I was like thinking that maybe I was my son was missing that or something so when I started thinking about it and think, you know, let's just find a church or, you know, maybe I should just read the Bible more and somehow magically, I don't know, the answer will come to me. That's when I started questioning things like a lot because I started reading the Bible like more closely. So, yeah, well, it's often said that people who have, you know, stopped being religious are the people who have actually read the Bible more in more detail because yeah. it's just so much in there that that is uh, kind of uh, shocking stuff, you know, yeah. Uh, from yeah. all of the... Uh, abusive behavior and uh, yes. slavery and you know all these various things going on in there that are just um, pretty shocking so so that's interesting and it's interesting also you talk about um, when you you um, both uh, had your son because obviously mm -hmm. one of the things with religion is then uh, you know the kind of expectation that you would then mm -hmm. indoctrinate your child into into the religion yeah. and give him messages about um, hell and and all of those things too and it sounds to me like, uh, you know, as far as I understand, that you've chosen not to do that. Is that is that the case? That is correct. Um, I think it started, the parallel to that was like the spanking thing. You know, like right. both of us were, you know, we weren't like, we were spanked, basically. And when we had our son, we both decided, okay, we're not going to do that. We're not going to spank or whatever. And then... That also kind of, it was, it was a lot of stuff happening at the same time, like me, you know, reading the Bible more closely and questioning things and um, and then looking at my the child rearing and choosing to do things differently than, you know, my parents did and my husband's parents did. And it was kind of all the same thing. Like, I just we decided together that, you know, we're going to do things a little differently with our son and one of them was, you know, not to spank and... Um, you know, just not to deal with a lot of the, you know, emotional abuse, frankly, that a lot of us have grown up with yeah. by parents that, you know, may have been well-meaning, but, you know. And so, um, yeah, and then the religious, basically, like you said, indoctrination, just not, you know, being grown up with that. And, and when I look at the Bible stories now, I mean, it just seems so inappropriate for children to read stories about, you know, beheadings and you know essentially like rapes and just all these like violent things yeah that are in this book <laughs> yeah you know? well um i think uh it's an 
it's a really commendable um, thing that you've a, a path that you've taken in terms of you know questioning the whole um, uh, well hitting children spanking uh, issue. Yeah. I, I really agree with you, and I think there is a relationship too. It seems to me that that um, one of the ideas in Christianity and probably in some of the other religions, but particularly mm-hmm. in Christianity seems to be the idea about um you know children being born essentially sinful mm-hmm. needing to be saved um, yes which is sort of in a sense like the opposite to the 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 approach of seeing a child as an innocent person that needs to be nurtured you know religion mm-hmm. seems to teach that the child is already um kind of um, well, evil in some way, or at least sinful, and therefore needs to be punished and and cajoled into being good, and that that itself seems to me that that idea has quite a strong relationship to um, spanking and hitting because it sort of gives a mindset which is to look at children as being you know uh, sort of born wrong as opposed to looking at children mm-hmm. being born innocent. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Um... Yeah, I mean, the the whole idea of the original sin and how that's supposedly passed down to every single person that's born is is ridiculous. But it, that is that idea um, bo- has borne the idea that your child is damaged somehow and they're in this state that you, and you have to make them be whatever it is, I guess, God is supposed to want for them to be. And if that force, if force will do that, then you do that. You know, spanking, hitting, any whatever kind of force you want to use, whether it's physical or psychological, it justifies that because, you know, apparently God, you know, is going to, I guess, reward you for whatever it is. I don't even know. Right. <laughs> you know, like to me, it's just so ridiculous now. I don't, it's hard for me. I mean, I guess if I tried, I can understand where people are coming from, but to me, it just is so clear that that mentality is um, damaging, mm. not just to the parent, but obviously to the child who's, you know, still developing in their, you know, psyche and their emotions and all that stuff. Right. Absolutely. I um I wanted to ask you, um, you know, just in terms of the the challenges that you face, because you know, it's it's really interesting hearing your story and. Mm-hmm. thinking is okay so first of all you had the challenge that you and your husband are an interracial couple and as you <laughs> mentioned that in itself you know you go to these churches and they're all still segregated and so forth mm-hmm. you know you um you've chosen a to raise your child in a non-violent way and you're unschooling and so forth and this, mm-hmm. again i know how far outside the kind of um, mainstream that that approach is and also, you know, you've together um, reassessed your beliefs and you've moved away from religion in particular. You know, you've chosen to end the, uh, the cycle in terms of, you know, not, not indoctrinating your own child. Mm-hmm. I, what I'm really interested to ask is, you know, I, I think that it's an incredibly brave and really admirable choices that you've made. Mm-hmm. You've chosen your own path and you've, you know, chosen a path that involves you taking your own freedom in your life to do the things that you want to do, to marry the person that you love and, Mm -hmm. you know, to raise your child the way you want. It must be very scary to to make those choices. And, you know, for other people who may be facing, you know, these kinds of choices, you know, maybe they're in a religious family and they're questioning it and maybe they want to have a relationship with somebody, um, you know, that is going to be... You know, bring them up against uh, prejudice and stuff what what is it that uh, you know how did you do it what gave you the courage to make these choices um well it's it's funny I guess um on some level level I've always not really cared what people think um I, I guess because you know like I said I grew up in Philly and it's and I went to a Baptist church, which was mostly black. You know, I, I wasn't really, you know, around a lot of, um, you know, white people until I started going to college. But um, I guess I've always just been pretty accepting of people, even despite my religious my religious bent at the time. Mm-hmm. And 
I've never, you know, judged anybody, you know, necessarily. I've never, I guess I've never not wanted to hang around somebody because they're, you know, a different race than me or because, you know, they're gay or whatever. It never mattered to me in terms of a one-on-one -on -one contact. Um, so even then, so, and then, like I said, I, I mostly never really cared what people thought. And I just kind of decided that, you know, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, that's the only way I can describe it. And I know some people don't operate with that kind of mindset because everybody's different, but, um, yeah, I just, I just kind of do it. You can't really, um, operate your life always thinking about, oh, what if somebody doesn't like what I do? I mean, you're, you're never going to like move, move on or move ahead with your life. Yeah. If you think that way. So do you think it will be an issue, you know, with your son, um, you know, obviously like uh, he's going to be playing with kids who, um, are going to uh, be saying Jesus is going to mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z when he comes back. And, I don't yeah. know, you know, that he's going to be playing with kids who are going to have uh, a lot of religious uh, stuff. And they may yeah. and also they may even also say things like, you know, you're going to go to hell or something. I mean, yes. is that something that concerns you? And how do you think what do you think the challenges are in that respect? Um, well, I have been struggling with like how to approach just him knowing that other people, you know, have beliefs and, you know, certain religious beliefs that, um, you know, we don't have. And a lot of our friends, I mean, most of our friends here, like his little pre his, um, preschool friends and stuff, they aren't really actually that super religious. I mean, they may, like, maybe go to church or something, but they're not, like, you know, super, like, militant religi yeah. religious. Yeah. Um, so it's actually fine. I mean, like, one of his friends um, is actually, his father's Hindu, Um so I think his friends here are actually pretty diverse. Right. So he may not come up. And then Oregon in general is just a very diverse state, mm -hmm. um, very liberal. So he may not have that problem. But obviously there are lots of people here that go to church and are Christians. So I guess I want to basically teach him to accept that people have different beliefs. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's kind of the main problem with religion in general and with Christianity in particular is that they don't accept that other people have different spiritual or religious traditions that aren't Christianity, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. Mm. So I want to teach my son that, yeah, um, this person goes to church and they believe in God. And that's one way, you know, to live your life. Mm. Uh, but there's other ways too. So, and they may not return that respect and that's fine, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. What do you think if, if you were able to, um, you know, let's just say, for, uh, for example, that um, this podcast might, somebody might be listening to this who still is within mm -hmm. a um, Baptist community, like the one that you grew up in, mm -hmm. maybe still also, you know, because the other thing I suppose that's interesting for you is that you live quite far away from your family of origin. Now. I do. Mm -hmm. and, and in a sense, you know, you... That can bring certain freedoms as well in terms yeah. of your lifestyle, and like nobody's going to miss you at the local church because you're you're in a right. state, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's just think about somebody who's still in Philly and still mm -hmm. from that community, and maybe mm -hmm. having some of the thoughts and doubts and thoughts about you know uh, questions that that you yourself had. You know, yeah. what what would you say to that person um, who's currently thinking like? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm in this community. It's going to be a major problem if I talk about my thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. I, I feel kind of scared. I don't know what to do. What would you say to that person? I would tell them to, we live in the age of the internet. So I would actually suggest just finding a community online where you can talk about your thoughts mm -hmm. um, and questions. Um, it's probably going to be pretty useless to talk to your pastor or any, any anyone else you know that's a pastor because if they do have doubts, they're probably not going to share them with you, especially if they're in a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your peers, you know, depending on their level of brainwashing, they're, they're probably going to shut you down too. So I would say 
find like-minded people online or um, just anywhere. Like if you're, if you're in college, you can probably find some kind of community of people where you can talk to them. Just some kind of maybe a free thought group or it could be any group really. And any kind of environment where questioning is not um, a negative and, and just try and seek out like-minded people to talk to. Because it is hard. Like, the only person I can really talk to is my husband. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and we, we've only been living here in Oregon for a couple of years. So we have some friends, but they're not, you know, super close yet. It takes time to connect with people. And, you know, politics and religion are very sensitive subjects. Yeah, so you kind sure. of get into that type of thing with people you don't know very well. But, um so, yeah, I mean, it takes time, and and I will also say just read. Like, sometimes you may have questions, and then if you ask somebody something, and if, you, if you're not armed with information, they might shoot you down, even if it's with illogical stuff. Yeah. And you might think, oh, and then you feel like, and, you know, you may feel like an idiot because you asked a question or something. So I would suggest reading mm. so that you can arm yourself with information. Um, and start with, you can start studying the Bible, studying the Bible and writing down all the questions you have and trying to seek out those answers and just, um, read books. Like one book that I read, Ishmael by Daniel Quinn was one book that really impacted me a lot. And I read that a couple of years ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it just helped me to really question, not just religion, but just our culture in general. Um, just, the, just our um, just the, 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 our, the culture has a very destructive elements in it, and it's, you know, extremely complicated. But, you know, just the, to me, just the idea of how if, if people don't live the way we think they should be living, whether it's their culture or their religion or whatever, we have to make them do the things that we do. Mm. So just that idea, to me, permeates um not just Western society necessarily, but just any society that is um, dominant, I guess, Mm -hmm. you know, dominant cultures of the past, because they're not all Western. So um, just, you know, just, and to me that connects to, to letting another person be like, if they have a different opinion or a lifestyle about something, it's fine. You know, you don't have to change it. You don't have to um, make them, think the way you think. I think that's just a major problem in our society. Yeah. Is that you, you, we don't let people be. As long as they're not hurting anybody, just let them be. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, in terms of the impacts that the, the move from being religious to not being religious, for you, mm-hmm. you, you and your husband, you know, what, what would you say, you know, what's like, what, what's life like when you uh, give up uh, religion, what can you compare, you know, now and before for yourself? You know, what do you think the difference is for you? Well, the first thing is I can sleep in on Sundays. <laughs> 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 Not have to, like, get up at the crack of dawn to be at church at, like, 8 o'clock or something. <laughs> so, um, nice. <laughs> that's a big plus for us. Um, it, I mean, it's a pain getting up even by yourself. So with two kids, cause I have a three and a half year old and a nine month old. So it's like, you know, I'm just happy I don't have to get up mm. and, um, I can just get up when I want. So that's one thing. And also, um, I feel like, I feel like freer, which is strange because I, you know, one aspect of Christianity they like to pound into you is that, oh, you're free in Christ and, you know, you shake off the chains of sin and you're free in Christ. And actually, you're not free to me because you have all these little rules that you have to follow and you're not quite sure. Like my husband likes to call Christianity kind of a choose your own adventure because there's so many things that people just believe for themselves. Like, for instance, like with Christianity, before Christianity, there was Judaism. So you know, they have the Ten Commandments and like they follow everyone except for the Sabbath one. And it's like, well, why? Well, because I'm free in Christ. And it's like, well, what made you decide that it was okay to like skip that commandment? (laughs) (laughs) You know, or just like eating shellfish. Why do you still eat shellfish? You know, it's like, 
well, because I'm free. It's the same answer. I'm free in Christ. And it's like, again, what made you decide that God, well, maybe God's not okay with that. Maybe he wants you to honor the Sabbath and not eat shellfish. Yeah. What makes you so sure that you're making the right decision on that? Yeah, there's so much in the Bible that you can basically pick and choose. Yes. And uh, which people obviously do. Yes, exactly. So it's, to me, it's like, I don't have to have those chains on me. I can decide for myself what I want to do based on whether or not I'm hurting anybody or not. I mean, obviously, if I'm doing something that's hurting somebody else, I can stop doing that, mm. you know, or um, if I'm doing something that I know is going to help somebody, then I can do that. I mean, to me, that, you know, inner morality is is truer than this, like, list of rules, arbitrary rules that you have to follow that somebody wrote how many thousands of years ago? So, yeah, I, it's, I, I completely it's, understand that. Yeah, so to me, I just feel freer. I feel, I don't feel like somebody's, you know, standing over me, picking over every little move I make. And if, you know, like I said, like I said earlier with the fear, you think if you do one little thing that I'm going to be punished, you know. So I just feel free to make my own decisions. And I also feel free to take responsibility for the decisions I make. You know, with Christianity, it's almost almost like this... Um, you know, well, I'm just going to trust in God. And it's almost to me like giving up responsibility for decisions you make in life. Right. Because if something happens, you could just ask, you know, blame God or something. Or blame the devil, too. That's a good one. They blame the devil. <laughs> and it's like, maybe, you know, it was just circumstance, you know. Or it could be any number of things why, you know, why, why something happened that wasn't to your liking. Um, and, you know, sometimes it is that you made a bad decision. And sometimes you made a good decision or sometimes it just, maybe it's nobody's fault, you know? So again, I can make my own decisions and I can take responsibility for them. And to me, that's more freeing, yeah. you know? So. Absolutely. I think that's awesome. And um, I I really would like to, to make sure that if people um, would like to sort of find out more about your thoughts and your writing, that they can find their way to your blog. Um, yes. So, could you um, could you tell me the uh, the URL for your for your blog, which is about um, is, is your thoughts on on especially on parenting and unschooling and bi- yeah. biracial parenting? Is that is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, my blog is www dot blog b l o g dot carissa brewster dot com. Awesome. Yeah, I just talk about all kinds of things like, uh, you know, again, like uh, attention with parenting, you know, breastfeeding and um, interracial um, families, um, race, all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of a a melting pot of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Well, as you know, um, unschooling and uh, and Mm -hmm. kinds of questions are are, are really um, of great interest to me and to the listeners of this podcast. So Mm -hmm. really appreciate talking to you about religion. And I I would uh, very much like to hear your thoughts about those topics potentially in the future as well. Um, Sure. That would be that would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. (laughs) Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Chris. It was really fun talking to you. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, yeah, thank you for having me.